Yeah. Uh, very good afternoon, everyone. So I think uh, most of your wait is over. We are here with the session which many of you would have been waiting for for days. Uh, the session is going to be electric. Uh, it is. It is after all an electric vehicle. And uh, with me uh, is Mr. Venkat Narasimha Rao. Uh, he has uh, been at the forefront of the electric vehicle revolution, I should say. Uh, previously a part of uh, Ola Electric Vehicles and now he is CTO at Ampere by Greaves, uh, which is again an electric vehicle scooter company. And uh, this is a session where the idea is that uh, we would be walking you through a bit on electric vehicles, how the industries are happening and you would be hearing directly from the person who is leading and shaping the industry, you know, be better. So uh, we would be starting in a minute. Do uh, you have time to call up your friends, you have time to share the link, ask them to join in and we would be going over to Sir to hear from him within few seconds. So do not miss the chance, uh, we are live so take best of it and we would be hearing from Sir in next few seconds. So. start so thank you sir thanks for taking a yeah. uh, time out from your hectic schedule uh, it is pleasure to have you yeah yes uh, i hope uh, everybody every uh, very good afternoon to all and uh, uh, Mag has already introduced, uh, introduced me. And thank you so much for being participating in the live session today. And uh, as uh, Mag mentioned, that uh, I'm Venkara Narsimha Rao. And in the short, people call me as Narsimha. I'm the Chief of Advanced Technologies at Ampere by Greaves. And uh, today, we will be giving the session and uh, keeping the large uh, different uh, groups of engineering students and different domains and different engineering branches and it is tried to concise into the very simple a simple manner to each each and every, even a computer science graduate can understand what is exactly on the motor motor controls for EV technologies and uh, also this EV is a revolutionary thing is going on uh, nowadays in the world and uh, this is the very advanced technologies are going on and then everybody is very passionate about the EV electric motor uh, motors and motor controls, which is the propulsion system for an electric vehicle to succeed. And the pro your propulsion system, your motor is good, motor controls is good, and then you are good, and you are safe, reliable, and stable, and then your nothing stops you on the technology. So these are the very crucial technologies, and understand what is how the uh, the session goes today is that uh, how the motors actually has been first invented, and then how it has been evolved, uh, evolution has happened. And then the to con the along with the the motor developments, so we was needed to develop the controls as well because otherwise the motor alone cannot drive the system because you need between the battery and uh, motor to drive you need a controller to control the system there. So this is the basically we will be having very pretty basics to understand to the possible extent of the deep inside. Uh, so some people it will be very simple to digest it and some people it may be complicated and you are free to ask the questions. And but it is taken as very moderate presentation. Well, thank you so much. So I think we are good to go and just good to start. Yeah. So now, uh, uh, as I mentioned, um, today whatever the generation, whatever we are enjoying today, is the the greatest ever invention and the electric motor because today controls came because the invention has first happened in the motor side, and that's none other than by Michael Faraday. And Michael Faraday, we consider him as a father of electricity, and. Uh, um, anything? Can I go ahead? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So he is the father of electricity, and uh, he is the first inventor of the motor. Can anybody 
was able to imagine at the time. So he was the person who imagined the electric motor converting the electricity into magnetism, magnetism to an electric motion, the motion, physical uh, electromagnetic motion. So this, for the simple concept that what you see in this image and this page, so is, this is the, the uh, I'll take a marker, with a pointer. Yeah, so this is the image which is filed by in his patent and the simple representation I have used this image but to, to do the simple this construction, the Michael Faraday almost spent 11 to 12 years of his life to invent this. So that means the elect electric electricity can be converted to magnetism that was known to him at the time when he started the discovery and inventions. And that magnetism can be converted back into the mechanical motion was his thought. And then that took him almost like his 12 years of his life. And that greatest invention has helped us to today's lives that whatever the fan you call, mixer you call, you call AC, compressor, whatever you call, today everything is that's that source because that's why he's been called as a father of electricity. And the two things that we have to understand is that from this is, uh, from his uh, uh, discovery is that any current carrying conductor, you have current is known term to anybody, any any science, any branch of science people, most of the current current we talk about. If you place a current carrying conductor, and you, we also know that the magnets from the childhood, whatever the branch you study, but we use the magnets to play. And if you place a two north pole and south pole between two magnetic uh, poles, and then you put a place a conductor which is carrying a current, that's what is the discovery from his that is an experience is a force. That means it goes either downward, it goes an upward. So that is a kind of first he understood that a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field experiences a force. And please remember, this is the statement I'm going to repeat till the end of the presentation. A current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field experiences a force. And taking this is the fundamental of uh, this observation that he translates to an rotating motion or uh, um, the electric motor, the invention happened. So he took the battery and the battery connected to a plastic rod or maybe a, any any plastic rod and then he took the copper wire surrounding that and put a copper rod into the liquid mercury and again he um, immersed a copper uh, wire into the mercury and then take that back to the return back to the closing to the uh, battery here and this he has placed a magnetic field here because we need a magnetic field and there's current carrying conductor he placed here then he has observed uh, surprisingly this this the the fulcrum which is having free to rotate and this been spinning around this magnet and that was a surprising movement that i think we can convert an electromagnetic force can be into the experience of the mechanical force and that can finally can be translated into a rotation so that is the way the invention happened to the uh, the first electric motor and with that invention then the uh, then people because that that kind of construction is not practically not possible where you will use this kind of construction we cannot practically use this construction it has to be in the physical nature what we are using a fan motor or some other motor it has to be translated into the physical physical understandable and physical and simple um, nobody can put mercury nobody can put the magnet in the hanging uh, threads and rods all those things are not possible so they, the transformation has took some time and then they took the this kind of mechanical the fulcrums and mechanical um, the C sections and mechanical D sections and finally translated to this kind of uh, rotary section because the ultimate aim is that we have to keep a current carrying finally translated like this so we have to keep we have to keep a current carrying conductor these are the current carrying conductors placed on a rotor rotating element and this is the magnetic field this is the north pole and this is the south pole so if you put a current carrying in the that's the, what the invention for the Michael Faraday. And then finally translated like this, and this started spinning, and then you are getting the experience of the force, but whether you can call it as a mixer grinder in your home, or your fan, or compressor, whatever you name it. Even today is the electric vehicle, to propel your vehicle uh, to rotate your wheel. And, but the thing is that something that you can observe, the current which is being sent here, the current being sent here, is through a physical wire, to which is a stationary, and the two x the current through a brush segment here these are the brushes the carbon brushes that will connect to the commutator segments here you can see these brushes will connect to the commutator segments and this commutator segments through that a stationary object to the rotating object is connected to the through a carbon brushes but what happens is many people might have gone through the say in a, in the home generally we face the problem we use a mixer mixer grinder then say that my god the brush has worn out my mixer is not working we take to some semi center and they replace the carbon brushes and then mixer starts working back so this is the but one stationary to rotating to the rotating element is a pretty difficult because always when you have a friction there worn out happens and the brush worn out brush worn out so that's to avoid that so the 
but we cannot avoid that how to do this but not only that one the maintenance is a problem and the dust particles or carbon particles are flying around the space and then sparks comes in when the current is jumping from one segment to other segment the sparks comes in but this is pretty good motor the invention was good but the problem is that it is not you cannot use in a chemical industry you cannot use in the petrochemical industry you cannot even use for the electric vehicle purpose because any spire cal uh, fire or sparks coming out of the vehicle that's not good that's not advised so it's going to create a problematic but this to solve this but how what michael fad is saying that i need to place a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field to do this one is it has to rotate one has to not one is the stationary one is to be rotating so to solve this problem it's a little complex problem and this complex problem was there for some so, some years so from the, how many years 90 1834 then the none other than the great inventor another great inventor is the nikola tesla the nikola tesla in 1888 he solved this problem what he has done is that's a beautiful is that i don't want to connect anything physically electrically i think of course you cannot avoid the physical connection between stator and rotor through ball bearing you have to connect it but he want to don't want to electrically connect between this is a stator and this is a rotor you don't want to connect anything between these two things then he invented instead of dc then he started using the alternative current what he has done is a very smartly he has a three distributed winding he has the winding so he has the winding three windings distributed in space and he has given the time varying signals you can see that the the signal is actually varying with respect to time and if you give this time varying signal to a distributed winding in the space then you can see one blue vector which is spinning here this actually in stuff keeping the rotor uh, connecting the rotor field then he is giving the rotating space magnetic field in this case you see that the magnetic field north and south pole is fixed in the space that means if you keep a table fan like a table fan it is stick it stick to the table fan and this fixed north and south pole will not change anywhere if you see today it will be the same it will be, if you see the tomorrow it will be same but it will not it will be fixed so in order to that we have to keep that fixed and then give the rotating current uh, the current has to pass through the brushes here so what he has done is smartly by doing this one the north and south pole pole itself is rotating so because of that there was the induced emf happens in the rotor here and this induced current has the short circuit rewards will create a circulating current and that current will interact the the top north pole and south pole which is the magnetic field produced by the stator so that gives an experience as a force but that has avoided and that's why this motor is being called industry hearts hearts motor it's like an it's a very rugged, very robust even being used today and this technology is used even today the what he has invented in 1888 and the same technology is used in the tesla whatever the tesla vehicles what we call it's a great company great great vehicles and autonomous vehicles and all those things still this is the invention 88 and we are talking about after 2021 and this is being used in the model 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 3 of the tesla vehicles as well as the audi tron in the audi vehicles also being the same technology is being coming in the this technology so that means such a you can imagine any technology is still prevailing today after 100 plus years 120 130 years later also that means you can imagine what is the kind of the great invention is that okay and this is the what uh, so the this forms the technology towards working to the alternating currents and alternating uh, current based motors okay so today now we will try to understand what type of electric motors are available so what is how we categorize them so the electric motors are broadly categorized as a dc motors ac motors and special purpose motors we'll try to understand each and every motor so let's first go through the dc motors so the dc motors is uh, you have the separately excited motors self excited motors and permanent magnet based uh, dc motors they broadly these again classified into three types of motor we will not be spending much time but this was the what michael faraday time the inventions carry forward and then being used but they have done very pretty good job to the society uh, for almost like a 30 40 years uh, after his invention So this is separately excited. The name came is the because the field, the as we know that Michael Faraday told, a field, electromagnetic field has to be there, and the current carrying conductor has to be there to experience a force. The field comes from this this winding separately, and the current carrying conductor is in the armature. So this produces experiences a force. But you need the two different kind of the current is here is one current, and there is a different current to flow through this winding. So two separately going on. That's why they are called as separately excited. but the advantage being the separately excited is that it's maintains very constant speed applications like a lathe machine you have a precise controls precise cutting 
lathe machines are required and where you need a precise speed control is required you can control the field you can control the stator both can be combinedly both can be independently doable so that's why it's called separately excited and it has its own purpose of maintaining constant speed application and then this this is the dc series motor this is the one of the another beautiful motor was the greatest invention this dc motor because you see this is the field is also being produced by the whatever the current is going through this both will carry the same current means the current is here current is small current and the field current is also small if the field current is small pretty small and the field current is here also the armature uh, sorry armature current is small and the field current is also small this is many people would have observed if you would have seen the old locomotives the trains you see that when you close eye if the train electric locomotive starts you will not able to feel that the actually the vehicle started it's called self relieving motor and it gives a beautiful smooth starting torque and then you get an once it start running it you get a very powerful torque so this is the mostly used for the traction applications and the olden days when the there was no induction motor controls were available and uh, this is the another thing is that we don't want to use the two different supplies like what we are using they want to use the single supply see you see that uh, the dc supply is the only one supply and connected field is connected here the magnetic field is being produced by this field and the current required for current carrying conductor is required by this uh, armature is also coming from the both are from the same source that's why it's called self excited uh, shunt motor because it's connected in parallel but another advantage this is been advantage sir what is the difference between these two things because it's a separately is also same thing it is doing uh, self is also doing same thing but there's a peculiar difference between these things is but in case of any if this is become as a generator this can all motors are can is convertible you can use as a generator you can use as a motor if there is any dead shots that could happens here if it's a generator what happens is the field collapses if this field collapses the the motor itself is a self protecting motor you don't need a fuse you don't need anything else to protect the system so it is a self relieving completely you don't need to protect it anything by external means it's a self protection system is then people went to combining them into multiple applications based on the shears punchers and the punching machines and other things they want to have more torque whereas at the same time they want to have the uh, very uh, punchy torque so they combined for the fields different fields they combined it is a shunt field they combined series field and many experiments they have done but they has uh, their own advantages with the evolution evol uh, evolution of the uh, permanent magnets why we should have to send a current to this why we have to always send a current and wasting that current why don't we use the permanent magnets so then they started instead of using these fields then they went for the permanent magnets so stator will be completely permanent magnet and the rotor will carry the current so that's why permanent magnet based on dc motors so these are <coughs> these are basically the different kinds of categories of the uh, motors for the dc motor side then let's go to the ac motors so ac motors are classified as an asynchronous motors and this synchronous motors the asynchronous motors are three phase uh, three phase uh, one thing is what we are discussing is this is the invention of the nikola tesla motor that's called induction motor square case induction motor and the synchronous motor because asynchronous motor means the rotor and the stator will never rotate at equal speed at any given at any given point of time both will rotate at a different speeds because that is required because otherwise there will not be any induced emf in the rotor so that's why it is asynchronous means the rotor speed and the rotating vector what we have seen here the the blue vector whatever the blue vector's rotating speed and the, the rotor is physically rotating here both are will be different they cannot be synchronized that's why it's called a synchronous motor and then the other motors called synchronous motor synchronous motor means you always see that the rotor speed as well as the rotating vector a rotating magnetic field and stator will be rotating at both are rotating at equal speed they cannot rotate at different speeds so in that category so we have the permanent magnet motors that today all people are talking about interior permanent magnet motors are surface mount surface this is the permanent magnet motor category but the people call as the surface mount that the magnet the magnet is mounted on the surface it's called surface magnet motor if interior permanent magnet motor if this if it's a magnet is inserted in, inside the this kind this is one type and you see this is this is another type and this you have interior permanent magnet this is have a different shapes that we will be going to discuss here uh, next slides and then you have the um, uh, you have the separately excited also separately excited the excite uh, this no, you will not use the permanent magnet you use the excitement excitation in the uh, rotor and you have the the you have the bldc motors these are bldc motor these are also called synchronous motors and you have an axial flux motors the axial flux motors is the flux flux flows actually parallel to the axis axis and then you have the these are all motors what we are talking about is the radial flux motors 
the radial flux motors are the motor the flux is radial to the the axis so this is these most of them are almost all of them are actually radial flux motors except these axial flux motors this has a different advantages and disadvantages so we'll see later and there's another type is that which does not use the uh, it is also a radial flux motor but which not does not use either conductors in the rotor like an induction motor here you use in the rotor conductors or you use the permanent magnets this motor is a special motor that will not use the either magnet or you don't use the either the uh, uh, copper conductors in the rotor it will basically operate from the reluctant stock and we will also understand that in the coming slides okay and then the third category is the special purpose motors the special purpose motors are uh, very miniature motors are different kind of application these are also any motor is uh, all are connected to ac and dc only but this based on the applications they have categorized as the special purpose motors like a switch reluctance motor switch reluctance motor is like an uh, much bigger size than the stepper motor is a stepper motor is the whatever you see the uh, clocks you see clack 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 all these motors are operated from the stepper motors the stepper motor if you see the bigger amplified into kilowatts zone then it becomes the switch reluctance motor yeah and there's an induction motor but it is actually uh, uh, you cannot see any motor it's a rotating kind of thing it's a, like a plate it's a linear motor this is used for the applications of your magnetic levitation you see the high speed trains they should if a high speed is to go travel the train cannot actually uh, at that speed they cannot touch the uh, the rail so they have to maintain the 2 mm or 5 mm gap between the rail and then the wheel so this magnetic levitation is used by this induction motor and this is the how they use the magnetic levitate once you picks up some speed then automatically the the the, the train what where you are sitting it's actually levitates little up and then it floats in the air and so that you have no low friction on the wheels and then then you get an cushioning air cushioning kind of experience on the so then you get a very high speed are possible to achieve it and this is a universal motor this is a called universal motor this is everybody experiences every day the universal motor is like an you have the mixer motor why this is called universal motor is this is a peculiar motor this you give the dc supply it operates and you give a ac supply it operates so that's why it's called universal motor the our in the home whatever the motors that you see you give the dc supply it still it rotates you give the blindly ac supply it still rotates so it does not distinguish between ac and dc but it rotates and then it does the job for you so that's the how the construction is that and that's that's why it's one of the special motor that's why we call as an uh, it's also as the dual supply of the ac and dc so that's why we call as a universal motor and stepper motor we discussed it and there's a motor called hysteresis motor and this was invented by the sony uh, for their walkman series because in the walkman when you want to listen to music and you need a pleasant music and you want a constant head moving on the tape and the people may not be experiencing today and maybe who are there 10 15 years back they were experiencing the walkman series because now everybody is the, the smart card and then you are apple like part shuffle and this is, it does not have any moving parts and but when this was a tape based system tape based system you actually have um, the tape moving on a head and then it reads it if you don't maintain the speed constant from the motor then you you see the song is not you don't, you don't feel as pleasantness so you get the very disturbed thing but to maintain such a constant speed you need a controls for a walkman kind of small device you cannot have an expensive controls like how you use for a ev controls so that's why it's specifically specifically this is being used as hysteresis control and hysteresis motor is designed the hysteresis comes is like uh, uh, you see that there is a band here the, when you excite the coil here the first flux flows through here this is like a shock absorber the shock absorber when you are sitting in a car so if there is no shock absorber what happens any impact to your tire it's just immediately reflects to back to you the person who is sitting in the back seat right and when you have a shock absorber it actually the first wheel gets the impact and then later the you get the after the cushion and the damper then you get the feel okay there is a something i gone through a, a, a stone or pebble or maybe a dip through a ditch then you get a feel after some time actually the wheel experience is the first so same way we have a something like a shock absorber that's the um, this is called a lag coil and a shaded coil that's what the when you excite a coil the first because there is no spring or damper here the flux produces here but with a small time this flux vector because through the damper then it shifts to here you can see there is a physical shift from here to here it happens <clears throat> so that makes the rotation is the simple brief rotation and the excitation coil will have a, a clock kind of signal which actually maintains the constant clock pulses and that constant pulses will come give this shift and then the motor spins so it's very simple controls not to have a sophisticated controls to do the job and it does the perfect job so this is what we in used in the walkman series phones 
so yeah so now uh, let's enter into the uh, discuss about the different kinds of ev motors so the ev motors like you see this is the um, uh, say this is the bmw uh, motor bmw i3 motor and this is the nissan leaf motor if you see from the sideways nissan leaf motor and this is the tesla model 3 motor and this is the tesla induction motor and this is the toyota prius motor and then you have the uh, general motors chevrolet old or bolt motor structure then the question comes to us my god why this is this is so but these all motors are called except this this is the only induction motor being used but other motors all motors are called ipa motors interior permanent magnet based motors all motors come in category but they have different different peculiar shapes and for different different purposes we'll try to understand why they have gone for this kind of different shapes and something that see there is one concept that what we have to understand is that um, the reluctant stock so reluctant stock is um, try to understand don't like look to because i just for the picture purpose i have put because it's very complicated for other brands of sciences of engineering students to understand so like try to understand what i'm trying to show here see this is this is uh, you can see here one thing this is this part is the magnet and uh, this part is uh, okay i'll show something yeah so the magnet will be here the magnet is magnet will be placed here and this is the air this what exactly happens is here let us try to understand in very simple meaning simple meaning i think everybody can see me and we so if you have a rotating element of iron if i have a magnet here when i move a magnet because this is all iron everywhere it attracts here also it attracts here also it attracts here also it attracts here also it attracts everywhere it attracts you cannot actually if you want to rotate this even if you move if you move the magnet over this it will not move because everywhere it is attracting same iron is there because it doesn't see but what i i can do is that to make a moment if for example if i make a split here when magnet is here when when there is an area here so it gets it, it attracts here and then when you make a move this because this is there's no attraction here this will follow this this is why when the same magnet is like this completely in the rotation direction you don't get any experience of force different forces are you don't see the different reluctances here but when you split that rotor into the here this gets attraction here and then when you try to move it here this follows that so this is what is called when previously actually the two advantages you made a split you removed a material that reduces the cost that reduces the uh, weight of the system but at same time which was not previously rotating now it is free to rotate it so that means there is an advantage coming because of the split of the rotor now you see these spaces these constructions went into that to take the advantage some advantage the split is doing they want to take some advantage what is that advantage is called the reluctance stock so there is a torque produced by the magnet there is a torque produced by the uh, reluctance so let's see that means the black one what you see here is here is the total torque required if you see all the six graphs here all the six graphs you see the total max torque is produced is around 55 55 here also 55 everywhere you see that is the total torque being produced by the motor total output but you see internally there are two graphs one is the blue one that's called for a given motor this is the reluctant stock and the red is the magnet stock now see the magnet stock is being 35 newton meters approximately but in this case if you see uh, it is less than 10 newton meters the magnet stock is which one we choose we choose this one because my motor output what is to be sub supposed to be coming is coming from the 55 newton meters is what i want to drive my vehicle that is coming but when i want to go why should i go for the magnet torque because when i want to go for magnet please understand that magnet is very very expensive in the motor the cost 30% of the way 30% of the cost goes for the only magnet if i make zero must try to away my motor cost goes be, be reduces by 30% so we what we see is that so we try to optimize the magnet torque being produced the red one we have to reduce and then use the blue one the reluctance stock to increase so that we will have an advantage of having the very very uh, good utilization so that is why these shapes came and they tried one other people tried experimented it try to take the advantage of the reluctance stock so decrease the um, dependency on the magnet side so that's how they did it and that's why this pani so many peculiar people peculiar pick sorry uh, peculiar shapes and to people are trying to optimize further so that we can reduce further magnet and something like that so that's the basically the reluctance stock and then uh, uh, to utilize that this, these many shapes has come in yeah next coming into the uh, 
motor controls. Why and what kind of motor controls is needed for us? And why we need a motor control? We were being discussing Michael Faraday invented the motor and after that it went to the DC and then we went into the AC, alternating currents, but alternating currents also the motor has been, you have seen that evolved into the multiple shapes and multiple st structures, multiple reluctance stocks, multiple complex shapes and complex uh, um, things came in. So, but why then, but it is not just you are designing the motor because earlier it's like a, you close a switch and then does the job. But now this high performance stocks and high performance things are coming here. So we should be able to do the high performance stock controls, but that needs a controls. And why we need a control, we'll try to understand. So see, for example, this is one example why we need a control. We can see this example. This is a starting. So when you are at zero speed, at zero speed, if you have the motor controls, you need a almost to start, you have zero, zero percent of current. But if you don't have the control, if you don't have the controls, you, you can, everybody can see that it is asking same motor. If you don't have controls, it is taking 700 percent current more. Can you imagine at zero percent, if you have controls, it needs almost zero, almost zero. I'm not saying exactly zero, but it's near zero, zero current is required. And if you don't have current and you need to pump 700 percent of the current, but which is unimaginable, my battery is going to be drained. This electric vehicle range is important. I cannot go without any controls. So the controls are required and you have to maintain the controls here. So that's why we need control sophistication. And then what we can kind of control, it should be that one thing is that we want a smooth control. When we are driving, we should get a smooth experience. We should not get jittery, jerk experience and something like that. But if we want at the same time, we want smooth, but we want fast also. It should not respond if I apply throttle, if I accelerate my scooter today and after one minute later, it will respond and I will start driving it. That's nobody want. I want to give the throttle here now that the response should come now. Fastly, fastly it should respond, but it should respond very smooth. And at the same time, we need accurate. It's not just responding or something. It should be very, very accurate. What we want, exactly like what instant we want, accurate it has to produce what the driver is commanding that. And at the same time, of meeting all these things, we want efficient, highly efficient. Highly efficient means this is what I explained here. So at zero starting, you need a zero percent. When it does, uh, when higher side, then I don't want to send 700 amperes, 700 percent of the current here. So that means when I don't send zero, when I don't send 700 percent, when I send only zero percent, that means absolutely my system is efficient here. For the same purpose, I'm sending almost zero current. I'm not saying zero, absolutely, but so more maybe five percent, ten percent of the uh, current because that image is very small. That's uh, that's why it's not able to represent there. And then, uh, then uh, also the advantage of the going for the motor controls is that uh, in case of the engine side, if you want to go, engine only rotates in one direction. You take conventionally, conventional vehicles like a uh, petrol based vehicle, you take a car, you take a scooter, it can only rotate in one direction, the engine. That's why you see that um, anything that you want in the car, you want to go reverse, you have to put in the reverse gear. In the scooter, you don't go because there is no reverse gear that, so you have to actually stop the vehicle and then yourself turn it. But the advantage of the electric motor and electric motor controls is that you can rotate. This is the forward control, so you can comfortably rotate in the forward. And this is, you can exactly, whatever you want to go in the reverse, no need of gear or anything that's not required. You can go comfortably reverse. You go forward, you go reverse. And at the same time, this we don't use it because this is an energy dissipation based, based braking. And we use, this is a regenerative braking. So at the same time, if in a conventional vehicle, when you brake it, then the disc brake or you use the mechanical brake it crosses the friction and then a lot of heat dissipation happens there. But whereas in electrical systems, the electrical, it is not only forward direction, it's not only reverse direction, automatically when you apply brake, you actually generate the energy and put back into the, your battery system and so that the system efficiency further increases. So that's why this is what, why, what we call as the aid for the case of motor. This, this case is not possible other without gear for an IC engines and uh, diesel engines or petrol engines, but this you have to use a special transmission with a reverse gear and something like that, but still you cannot go for the regeneration there. But here in the electric vehicles and electric motor technologies that you have the forward control, you have the reverse control, you have the dissipated braking type and you have also regenerative braking type. All modes, all four quadrants are possible. That's the beauty of the electric drive system. Yeah. Okay. And then what are the different types of controls available for us today? So what kind of technology is being used for that? All the almost whatever the name you do, Tesla, Ola electric car, you take the BMW, Audi or whoever it is that. This is being, as I mentioned, this is the obsolete. Nobody is using DC motor drive. DC motor drive is uh, almost done. So everybody is uh, working only on the AC motor side. That's what we have understood from the previous slides. Then we have the frequency control. Frequency control is generally this is used for your refrigerator, 
or you are washing machine or maybe your fan application in the home so this is basically very simple controls and uh, very smooth to start but it's not aggressive control so you don't don't require the special controls here but uh, it's used for the small small kind of applications where you don't need high top demands and very fast response uh, demands are not required use the frequency controls and there's a flux vector control this is the what being used by the all people even today who whatever the name you do wall electric or uh, ampere are you uh, going to be um, tesla are you going to be um, uh, audi or bmw zm anything any name you will make it and whatever going to be ampere is developing it is also the flux vector control here and uh, this is the what the sophisticated precise controls and uh, you do the lot of advantage and smooth response and these all the char characteristics what we are talking is beautifully possible with the flux vector control and there is another control this is also being used for the something in industry applications but generally this is can be used as a redundant controls but will not be used as an as a direct controls for the electric vehicle applications because it has its own limitations it also it has its own problems so but this will be used as a redundant applications can be used in case of sensor failures as a redundant mechanism otherwise you can blindly consider the flux vector control is being used always in the field that yeah so if you see the electric drive system how actually practically it looks is you have uh, this is the physical component that you, what you see this is a courtesy from semi semicron and uh, this is a physical motor which is outside of this device and you have the position sensing feedback also mounts on the motor and this all the rest uh, this is the battery other than this the complete everything and this in this block everything can say uh, consists of inside it has a two level inverter you have dc capacitors dc voltage measurement and the phase current measurements you have power electronic controls and you have the vehicle power and controls all these chips are actually inside this is the one module that actually has the motor controls you have vehicle controls you name it power and controls and this is the person who is going to uh, drive your your uh, all uh, the propulsion required the motor is driven by this this controller here and uh, yeah so i want to just touch uh, how does actually the controls looks like so this is a, what is a simple fair representation of the the motor controls of an induction motor and uh, very important why it's very complex is that the motor controls depends upon the so much of the mission parameters you see the mission parameters these are the mission parameters you see the stator magnetizing inductance uh, rotor rotor uh, uh, rotor inductance and then you have the flux linkages and the rotor resistance and any of these numbers estimated estimation goes wrong or uh, error then what happens if we, this is what is expected this is what is expected we want the people we want to have pre smooth precise what we were talking about it but any of this error goes mistake and you get an oscillatory response and then it goes back and your speed response is bad and this preciseness is requires lot of understanding of uh, controls lot of understanding of preciseness and how it's a multi dimensional problem where the real complex scenario stays in so that's why that's why it's not so simple how it looks it because the these equations to implement is pretty easy in matter of simlink but when you are coming to understand the tuning in the real life environment fault safety stability all those things is a really really very tough to real to you need complex domain knowledge in this space to understand these things so and that is the parameter variation and the physically based on the battery side battery voltage based on the speed and there is another complex dimensions of the problem comes i don't want to explain anything here but how this complex domain complex problem is that one is the parameter side one is the resistance side one is the mechanical side friction side and another side is the battery side constant battery voltage decreases with the usage of that and this scenario becomes much more complex here so that complexity goes on goes on goes on because of all multi dimensional complex merging together to make the motor controls to work is a very complex problem it's not the smooth that the whatever these equations that you require if i implement this motor controls done no it's impossible to say that almost impossible to say that so then and then i think it's my final slide and then also it is not only motor controls and it's not only about the designing a best motor here you see that and the always the powertrain system side what you see is that so the optimization very important and designing the complete system very efficiently that's very very important here so the complex system is here for example you see that the if i select the same motor the both motors if you see this this motor one and this motor two both are same motors if you see the colors and everything shade and everything is absolutely the same motors but if you really see the this motor is being used with the gear ratio 4 and this motor is being used the gear ratio 
and that this is the same drive cycle you are driving in the same pattern everywhere you are going rising going rising up down up down up down and everything you are doing it here but the operating domain this is operating here this is being operating here so based on that nothing changing as a there's a 4% of variation in the efficiency numbers only the number of the gear change that gives a lot of impact on your energy numbers it's not only the motor designing efficient because the motor is same your controls is same everything is same your controls are efficient your motor is efficient but where you are operating is also be going to get impacted and that changes your cost economic cost economics and your battery economics and then you have to spend a lot of things yeah so thank you so much for being participating today uh, session and thank you so much for you all in a very uh, concise manner a lot of things covered which essentially uh, any student would love to you know get in hands on understanding how things work because when a student looks at a motor they look at a very theoretical perspective of it uh, understanding from you know just a mechanical perspective or just understanding the laws perspective that okay you know that's how it rotates that's how magnetism works but i think uh, giving a whole perspective of essentially how the small things variations impact in efficiency uh, and all those aspects are uh, give uh, open up the i would say the thinking pattern for student yeah so uh, with this uh, that's right. yeah sure definitely So anyone uh, you have doubts uh, please feel free to ask in the chat the chat window is open uh, you could ask any doubt you have uh, from Mr Narsimha and yeah you won't get this opportunity again uh, so take a benefit of it learn the things from the person who is at the forefront of the technical revolution please feel free to ask any doubts you have we have got first doubt uh, which is asked by bharat what are the internal and external factors that affects the efficiency of a motor and how to overcome it okay so um the external factors is definitely the your uh, um, uh, environment so where the temperature so suppose if you are operating um, the motor same motor in the bangalore and the same motor in the delhi or somewhere very hot places because here you see the most of the time the temperature is 30 35 degrees centigrade right and the outside when you are cruising and then the environment if is cool and then free of cost the cooling it comes in so that uh, automatically your motor and the system operates in a very efficient way so even if it's a, if you know sure that the motor is going to be only operating in the bangalore the city environment and uh, you can little bit optimize the cost and other things but if you operate same same vehicle same motor if you sell it in the delhi or something that it's not the same performance it can give it so you keeping these things mind external weather and external uh conditions of the temperature so you have to try to optimize it to the worst case scenario so that you get the advantage of the both bangalore bangalore further get the advantage of the efficiency and then whereas when you operate in the delhi you get a different thing and internal coming to the internal things is that uh, so we, as i mentioned the few things try try to take the optimization towards the magnet magnet is very expensive and we are dependent on the china and so it is always a dependency only one country that can supply the magnets and it's a dependency and then and also it's very expensive so try to minimize the magnet how much is that we can optimize with the design and now how we have and then we should uh, develop the techniques and then which is actually it's not easy as we talk and it's a very complex part you have to really understand how the magnetic forces act on the design front and through that uh, you optimize the magnet and then you optimize the size dimensions and then you go for the good steel and then which produces a lower losses and then go for the uh, good amount of the fill factor in the copper side so that your motor always operates uh, very efficient and so that uh, it sucks the less amount of the battery uh, energy and that you get a more range and also you get at the same time you get the very cost effective solution yeah no problem Okay. Uh, we have got another question from 
uh, Savanami, uh, why Tesla EVs has greater performance than other EVs? Any specific reason for it? Yeah, so this is the question actually, um, very good question. And this is what I was, my previous answer was also. You have to be their thorough R&D and you see the construction of their motors and the very looks very simple. And uh, and their copper fill factors, they they go very good copper fill factors, and they optimize the reluctant stock. And along with that, you yes, also you can uh, find the motor weight system from BMW to Tesla motor is almost like an almost like maybe my numbers may be a little bit wrong, but it's seven to ten kgs lower in weight. But the, so if you have the lighter system and which is powerful to produce the motor and all those things, then automatically you get a very good performance. And same time, they are very good at the controls and uh, the controls also works in coherence with the, what the motor designers, they do it. That's why it's not that Tesla is very aggressive startup. And then I know that uh, internal, my many of friends are there. It almost took four and a half years to integrate these two system. It's not done in one day or one week or one year. It's almost like four and a half years to spend to refine the controls as well as the motor design to coherently integrate together. And they does, uh, did a fantastic job. That's why they get um, even Porsche cannot meet that, that kind of performance, but they achieve it. It's not just uh, that, you know, uh, they have become what they are today. It's the work they have done over the years in research, which is paying them off now. Perfect. Uh, so, uh, I don't think, uh, Nasima, there are any further doubts. I think uh, we have these two doubts. So, uh, with this, uh, I would really thank you uh, for joining us and giving uh, the students the kind of knowledge, you know, the kind of uh, skills which are required, I think they would have got a glimpse from this because then they can go on and practice on these skills, learn these skills to be able to contribute to industry because uh, what we understood from here was ex you know, the small factors which are just theoretical on how to, uh, as you said, copper fill and the gear ratios and all those things, how do they finally come into play in e eventual actual vehicle and that either they drive the cost or drive the performance and all those factors, I think that's a very practical approach for the students, which uh, definitely they would have learned from this talk. So thanks yeah. a lot. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank, thanks them. Thanks, thanks to you and thanks to all the students. And uh, 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 I wish you all guys the best of luck and then have a great learning in the ahead. Thank you so much, Anima. Thank you so much. Bye. A great session uh, from a man who is at the forefront of many technologies, Mr. Narsima. Uh, he has been uh, uh, head of electric vehicle at Ola. Now he is heading. Uh, he is a CTO at Ampere by Greaves, uh, another electric scooter company which is producing uh, electric vehicles at a very affordable pricing. So this industry is exciting. A lot of changes are coming up and definitely the kind of learnings uh, you can get uh, is something which is unparalleled. Uh, via these sessions so definitely uh, you know if you need to relook at this go ahead uh, because the kind of person uh, who gave you the learnings is the person who has been defining uh, many industries so uh, i hope you enjoyed the session tomorrow onwards we are stand starting the second part of uh, byte event which is on machine learning and uh, python that would be starting tomorrow afternoon so i hope uh, you join that uh, that would be again uh, certified sessions where you would be getting certifications, you would be getting training uh, on the concepts and technologies similar to vehicle dynamics and electric vehicle. Uh, those are very exciting sessions which are going to come where you would be essentially working on the skills uh, which would be cool I would say. You would be working on data analytics, you would be working on image processing, you would be working on machine learning as well. So a lot of things coming up uh, in the coming week and then we have a session by an uh, expert who is working at US uh, Google. Uh, he is working with the machine learning team in one of the core teams and he would be walking you through how big problems are addressed by machine learning at a company like Google who create products for billions of people. Okay, So a lot of exciting sessions coming up. Uh, hope you enjoy the upcoming sessions. Uh, keep learning, keep exploring, have good